Yo, 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 what's up, Cyprites? Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, I'm reacting to Geography Now, Cyprus. I have a lot of idea of Cyprus because I'm, I live in the northern part of Cyprus and I speak Turkish. So, don't be surprised, okay? Um, yeah, I might know some, I might not know some. So, let's just get into the video, guys, without further ado. But please smash like on the video and suggest any thin Cypriot-ish, Greek-ish, Turkish-ish that you want me to react to and let's get right. Tree, two sides, three exclaves, four people groups, and a lot of confusing lines that can give even the most seasoned Uber driver a level five seat. <laughs> <laughs> I love his interest. His interest actually... Yeah, Everybody, I'm your host Barbie. If you don't know anything about Cyprus, all you really have to know is that it's an island with a lot of fine wine and landmines. Yep, I know about the wine. I don't know about the landmines because I really don't give a shit. About that barbecue one. and barbed wire, spa resorts and spies resorting to spying on. Let's move on. Oh, the more complex a country is divided administratively, the more I love doing these episodes. Oh, this is the. Uh, okay. So I imagine this is how a doctor no. feels when they go into surgery, removing tumors and transplanting organs and stuff. All right, uh, let's take out this exclave, and uh, here's a, an autonomous. Okay, a for the effort, though. A for the effort. A for the effort. Doctor, remember the border blockades and checkpoint stations. Oh, right. Uh, we'll need 50 cc's of legislative tension. Stop. Let's jump in. Cyprus, an island nation, is located in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, just off the coast of Turkey and Syria, and Lebanon in the Middle East. Yep. If you look at a satellite image of Cyprus, you'll see this nice little beige semi-arid island with a uniquely pointed tail at the east end. But if you look at a political map, you'll see this. One thing you'll immediately... Oh, from my gusta. Very cute. But if you look at a political right? map, you'll see this. Oh, this is where, this is where I am. God, look at Nicosia. Nicosia is oh, cute. One thing you will immediately notice about Cyprus is that the entire country is split by a huge demilitarized line known as yeah, the North. Yeah, North Oh, so South is even like far bigger than North. I'm not sure if I knew that. Oh, okay. This line spans 180 kilometers or 112 miles from Paralimni to Katopirgos. The country is divided into six districts. However, two of these districts overlap the buffer zone. So it's of course, UK is involved. Definitely. Kind of like eight districts, but not really, but kind of. If you ask a northern Cypriot, they'll tell you that their side contains five districts split like this. Now, why is there a UN buffer zone? Because since the 70s, Cyprus has been divided into two separate main entities. The Greek Cypriot yep. area in the south that makes up about 60% of the island, and the Turkish Cypriot side that takes about 30 6%. The remaining 4% belong to the UK and the UN. The UK operates the two overseas territories of Akrotiri and Dekelia on the southern coast of the country. These places are operated by the British military forces, although Greek Cypriots are totally allowed to enter and pass through the domain, just not enter the actual bases without permission. Dekelia is even more thing. confusing as it's the only part of the country that effectively cuts off the UN buffer zone from itself and holds three Cypriot exclaves, pronounced this way. Top I'm not even going to try to Akhna pronounce that. Road that acts like a single artery that connects to Kelia to its inland Ios Nicolas station. Now, when it comes to the UN buffer zone, most maps typically don't do a good job explaining exactly how it works. It's more like a quadruple border with four lines that are only a few meters wide that run along each other instead of two. These big areas still have fully operating towns and communities that lie within the parallel buffer parameters like the town of Athino or Tuloi, but they do have double checkpoints when going north or south. It's really confusing. It's like a part of Cyprus, but surrounded by the UN. Where it does get weird though is the capital city Nicosia, which acts. How does that make sense? Okay. It says the capital for both the north and. Huh? Yeah. Because yeah, actually, this is actually really a confusing thing. Like for instance, when you're on Instagram and you see like Nicosia, then be like, okay, she's from north. Okay, I just sold myself out. Anyways, like she okay, she's from the north. Then you check it out, then you just see like she's in Cyprus, southern part of Cyprus, huh? south parts of the country this is where the most notable division can be found and it's kind of weird walls and gates slice right through the city which have left certain buildings and streets untouched and abandoned for over four days oh yeah oh my god i know this place gates the biggest casualty of the division though would have to be the old airport nicosia international which is all but abandoned and empty today if you want to fly to cyprus today you will either have hey, to John. arrive at larnaca or paphos airport in the south part or erkan airport for north it's pronounced erjan no erkan 
northern Cyprus. Finally, you have the strange Kokina exclave that operates under the Turkish northern Cypriot area as a military base, cut off by the rest of the entity from Never a separate UN before. buffer zone. Now, regardless of all these barriers and walls, you can still cross over the sides. Today, there are seven checkpoints, and it's not that hard. All you do is you just show your passport to both the Greek and Turkish police and then head through. If you go by car, you will need to purchase new insurance on the side that you're entering, and you'll only be allowed to stay for up to three days. So that's about it. Simple, right? All right, let's move on. <laughs> Cyprus is said to be the legendary birthplace of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. And despite all the barbed wire and abandoned buildings, this country still holds its ground in aesthetics. First of all, the country has a dry, relatively warm Mediterranean climate with rainfall in the winter months. Cyprus is made up of two main mountain chains, the rugged Trodos chain in the southwest, which contains the highest point of the country, Mount Olympus. Yeah, they kind of copied Greece on that one. And the smaller <laughs> Kyrenia mountains that parallel the north coast. The country has only seasonal rivers that flow from nah, the mountains. Nah, those mountains are all really big. Yeah. after winter time otherwise most rivers dry up by summertime leaving empty riverbeds the government has really tried to combat the irrigation problem by building dams and reservoirs to oh some crop fields during the drier months after the split the north side took most of the grain and citrus and all of the tobacco fields however the south took most of the fruit orchards livestock and vegetable fields and nearly all of the grape vineyards Wonder. beautiful beaches line the coast of all sides with shrubs and eroded rock cliffs like the Aia Napa beach trees are taken seriously now as deforestation has hit the country hard in the past half century only about 17 percent of the country is classified as woodland and logging is heavily monitored it's actually totally legal to take figs and olives off of your neighbor's tree but illegal to cut down the tree even if you own it speaking of neighborly interaction let's jump into the most controversial part of this episode <laughs> uh, controversy controversy we need a distraction okay. here's a korean guy playing the bagpipes so as you could kind of gather from the previous two segments cyprus is kind of divided essentially the country is populated by two main ethnic groups that have quite an interesting history on the island mm -hmm. first of all cyprus has a population around 1.2 million and it has the highest percent okay that if you're talking about cyprus generally because i know just northern cyprus is not even up to a million in the EU of working adults with tertiary education. Although the numbers are a little hazy and debatable, the entire island is made up of about 77% Greek Cypriots and about 18% Turkish Cypriots. The remaining 5% come from a wide range of other nationalities like Armenians, British, Russian, and even a sizable Vietnamese community has settled in the country as well. Now here's where we finally address even the Nigerians. British, Russian, and even a sizable... Wait, the remaining 5% come from a wide range of other nationalities like Armenians, British, Russian, and even a sizable Vietnamese okay. community has settled in the country as well. Now here's where we finally address the elephant in the room. How on earth did all this internal conflict arise on such a small island? And by small island, I mean the third largest in the Mediterranean. Well, not getting too far <laughs> into history, okay. Cyprus has gone through a lot of crazy times in the past few millennia. The earliest recorded documents... Wait, is Malta one of the largest? If not the largest? Because I know Malta is an island as well, and it's... He looks exactly like Cyprus. I don't know if it's... So that it was first inhabited by the Mycenaean Greeks, and then the Assyrians, Egyptians, Persians, and then the Greeks again, and then the Egyptians again, then the Roman Empire, then the Arab Caliphates, the French, the Venetians, and then the Ottomans for like three centuries, and then finally the British until they broke free and became annexed in 1914, and then independent by 1960. And that's when the real domestic conflict began. Long story short, 1974 was the year when all the fighting went down, and this became a thing. To this day, Turkey is the only country that recognizes the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus as a sovereign state, yeah. whereas the Republic of Cyprus kind of acts as the poster child for the entire island on the world stage so that's why cyprus looks the way it does and that's all i'm gonna say the funny thing is most cypriots to date north or south want a reunification plan and think the whole division is just a stubborn older generation problem that shouldn't be carried out today culture wise of course greek cypriots are incredibly influenced by greece and greek culture however they do speak with a pretty interesting dialect that sometimes even greek people from the mainland have a little trouble understanding Many yeah, of the yeah words have that is actually true as well even it goes the same for the turkish side like the turkish it's difficult for like turkish people from turkey to like understand what they're saying a slight Turkish or Arabic undertone, and there's a whole slew of Cypriot slang that isn't even used in standard Greek. Yeah. Northern Turkish Cypriots, of course, identify closest to Turkey. Both sides, although heavily identified with their respective cultural religions, Islam for the North and Greek Orthodox for the South, the countries are both run under secular governmental systems. Most women in Northern Cyprus don't even wear headscarves, let alone typical conservative Muslim dresses, and alcohol is sold and drunken everywhere. Yep, even 
14 year olds actually buy drinks anyhow like. one thing that really sticks out though would be the proficiency in english since cyprus was under british rule for a while english became the de facto language and around 80 percent of the country actually speaks it of course greek and turkish yeah. are the official languages but english signs and translations can be found everywhere and typically you can strike up a conversation in english with most people on the island especially the younger generation this also helps out when the tourists start flocking in which makes up a huge portion of cyprus's economy let's talk about the interactions they have with outsiders <laughs> Oh wow, it's actually pretty accurate though, honestly. Like, this is actually the first country that is done a geography now on that I can actually relate to and, you know, really vibe with him as well. And I can see that his informations are 100% correct. Remember how in the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode we mentioned how the friend of your enemy can sometimes by default end up being your friend as well? Well, that's kind of how it works with Cyprus. When asking who their friends are, you kind of have to address which side of Cyprus you're referring to. If you're asking the north, then of course they'll say Turkey and all the friends that come along with the package with Turkey, like Azerbaijan or Pakistan and Afghanistan and so on. If you ask the Greek Cypriot side of Cyprus, you'll probably get a different response. You as can. part of the EU, Cyprus is kind of like the new guy that walked into the party with a few scars that everybody is slightly intrigued by and keeps their eye on as he walks over to the punch bowl. Israel and Armenia have always been close and many Armenians live in Cyprus and Armenian is a recognized minority language. Israel shares the same Western value of free market and trade as well as free democracy. When it comes to their best friend, however, hands down, no doubt, the Republic of Cyprus will tell you that Greece is their best Definitely. friend. Cyprus is the only other fully sovereign state in which Greek is the official language and heritage of the residents. Cypriots and Greeks absolutely love each other and will always have each other's backs. In conclusion, the island nation of Cyprus is a beautiful, well-educated, economically stable hot mess <laughs> who knows what it will look like in the future but let's hope it involves fewer blockades and more block parties stay uh -huh. tuned the czech republic also known as czechia is coming up next okay that was yeah pretty accurate 100 percent, and obviously like some more that I actually learned as well that's geography now cyprus and yet we'll see you next time guys peace